But Jesus took it to another level. Because he was a neighbor. He was a friend. Let the church say amen together. Praise his holy name. Turn in your Bibles with me, if you will, to the gospel as recorded by Luke. Luke's gospel, the very first chapter. Luke's gospel, the first chapter. And we're going to begin reading at the 26th verse. It reads as follows, and in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Lazarus, and to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, Thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. And he shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. And then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? This is the word of the Lord. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. I want to ask you to pray with us and help us this morning. As we try to talk about, uh, so this is an Advent message. We want to talk about divine solutions to human problems, divine solutions to human problems. And the text itself will come from verse 34 of chapter 1 of Luke's gospel. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I do not know a man? We're in the Advent season, and Advent, among other things, reminds us that, that Jesus means many things to the believer. For some, he means getting the most out of life. For he has said, I came that you might have life and might have it more abundantly. For some, he is refuge for the weary. For he has said, come unto me, all ye that labor and the heavy laden, and I will give you rest. For some, he gives a sense of purpose and direction. For he has declared that I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man can come to the Father but by me. But perhaps the most exciting thing about Jesus is that he brings divine solutions to problems for which there seems to be no human solution. The world today has many, many problems. And we human beings from time to time find ourselves confronted with circumstances that make us feel helpless and hopeless. 
But we who are followers of Christ are blessed that we have access to divine solutions for problems that are beyond human limitations. That ought to be good news for somebody here today. In a crowd this size, they're, they're bound to be some who are confronted with circumstances completely beyond your control. For others, it's about to happen. You just don't know it. But our training and our experience really are inadequate to cope with a lot of the circumstances of life. But the good news of Advent is that through Jesus Christ, man's extremity becomes God's opportunity. In our scripture today, we have an excellent example of how Jesus was given solutions to human problems even before he was born. This scripture tells us about the dilemma of Mary, the mother of Jesus, before he was born. In the text, she's just learned that she will soon become pregnant and have a baby. It was a shocking announcement for Mary, for Mary was a virgin. She was a devout, Jewish girl, she followed the law strictly, and she didn't even dream of having sexual activity before she got married. Nevertheless, there was no doubt in Mary's mind that this was an angel she was speaking to, and he wasn't playing. He declared it was going to happen. Not only that, he gave the details. He told that he would be a male child. He told her that his name would be Jesus. He told her that he would be an outstanding person. Surely, uh, this, this was a perplexing experience for Mary. Ambivalence would be the word that would describe Mary's state of, of mind. In other words, she had mixed feelings. She had to be honored to receive a visit from the angel of the Lord. She had to be excited by the news that he brought that she would give birth to a son who would ascend to the throne of David and that his kingdom would last forever. That was a blessing, a great spiritual blessing. But then on the other hand, Mary was human. Mary was a young woman in love. Mary had a fiance who never touched her. And she was looking forward to their being married and and knowing one another in a, in a personal way. How in the world would Mary ever explain this divine experience in human terms? One can imagine the emotional strain that this young woman was under at this time. Mary had a serious problem problem that she did not know how to deal with. She didn't create it, but she didn't know how to handle it. Now, friend, isn't that the way that life is? Sometimes things just happen. Unexpected things. Painful things. Frightening things. They can happen in all walks of life on the job, 
in the home, with your children, sickness in the body. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody listening to me right now might not be uh, confronted with a dilemma that has you puzzled and confused. Well, the good news of the Advent message is that there is a divine solution to your human problem. Let's see what we can learn from Mary's biblical experience that might help us to face our human situation. First of all, we must note that Mary's case was so frightening because there was more to the situation that she didn't know than what she did know. We'll say that again. She was frightened because there was more about the case that she didn't know than what she did know. If she had known what she didn't know, she would have had a completely different outlook on life. Now, friends, I want to say that to us today. Remember that whatever problem you've got, whatever it is, there's usually more to any problem that you don't know than you know. You see, God does work in, in mysterious ways. But remember, when something is mysterious to you, it's simply because there's something about it that you don't understand. Take note of what Mary asked when she was caught in the midst of this situation. Mary asked, how can these things be? Now, don't just overlook that question or run through it. That was an indication that Mary realized there must be an explanation. Now, I don't know the explanation. I just don't know what it is. But there has got to be an explanation. Now, don't miss that. The Living Bible says that she asked, how can I have a baby? I'm a virgin. Now, Mary was not disputing the angel. She was seeking information. And the angel knew that she was seeking information. That's why he answered as he did. He said, the Holy Ghost is going to make it happen. Oh, my friend, don't, 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 just, don't just run through that. The Holy Ghost is going to make it happen. See, when you can learn to think like that, it can open an entirely new outlook on life for you. Mary couldn't see any way that it was humanly possible for what the angel promised to happen. But Mary was spiritual minded enough to realize there must be a way. There must be a way. I just can't understand. Now when you come to realize that, my friends, it gives you an attitude about life that will make you see life in a different way. See, God had plans for Mary that she didn't know about. God was getting ready to use Mary in a way far beyond what she could ever imagine. Now, it's to Mary's credit that although she didn't understand, she still didn't dispute God and she still looked to God, and she was still willing to accept the promise of God. Now, friends, hear me today. When you've been born again, when, 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 when you have a relationship with a God, God will sometimes deal with you in a way completely beyond your understanding. But if you trust in the promises of God, you realize that I might not understand, but there, 
there is an answer. There's a divine answer to every human problem. You know, I have a, I have a friend who pastors in a fairly large church on the West Coast. He once told me about his childhood in Arkansas, how poor he was, and how his mother died when he was young, and how his father was addicted to alcohol and never took care of the family. And he was raised by his grandmama. And he said his old grandmama just always was struggling. They never seemed to have as much as other people had. And yet his grandma was always talking about Lord. The Lord. And he told me how, how that bothered him. And he said secretly in his heart. He decided that the Lord ain't all grandma think he is. <laughs> you know. One day he told his grandma. He said, Granny, you always talking about the Lord. If the Lord was fair, he wouldn't let you have as hard a time as you have it. Being the good woman that you are. And he said his grandmama told him, no, I agree, God ain't fair, and I'm glad he ain't. Because <laughs> if God was fair, I wouldn't even be here. And this preacher said as he began to study the word of God, he realized that if God had just been fair, a whole lot of folk would have been messed up. If God had been fair, Peter would have died on the third night before they crucified Jesus. Told Jesus that big lie. If God was fair, he would have cut him down. If God was fair, Paul never would have made it into Damascus. All the low down stuff he did. And so my friend said his granny told him, no, I never pray to God to be fair. What I pray is, Lord, have mercy. My friend said that changed his whole outlook on life. He said that although he preaches to hundreds of people every Sunday, he says he never preaches to them about a fair God, but he tells them about a loving God. He tells them about a forgiving God. He tells them about a saving God. God was dealing with my friend as a child in a way that he couldn't understand from a human point of view. Now you think about what we just got through said. you get it maybe later on this evening. <laughs> but he had an experience early in life that he looked back on and realized that there was a divine solution to his human problem. Yeah. Mary's experience and the text no doubt left her frightened and confused. But she was spiritual minded enough to realize that there was another way and it was the Lord's way. The next thing we should observe is that Mary's experience revealed that she was a part of something bigger and greater than the things of this world. Before this unusual experience, Mary no doubt thought she had come to the high point in her life. Mary was an humble Jewish girl, and young women in her social class and lowly status, she didn't have any great ambitions in life. She didn't have any ideas about she was going to be something big. The greatest thing that Mary could hope 
to achieve had already happened. She'd met a good man, hard-working man, religious man. She fell in love. He fell in love. They were going to get married and live happily ever after. That was an ideal future. And Mary, no doubt, thought that she couldn't ask for anything more in life than that. But now all of that seemed like it's fixing to change. If Mary became pregnant under these circumstances, completely contrary to acceptable religious and social standards, her beautiful dream would suddenly become a horrible nightmare. But the reality of Mary's situation was that she was in the process, and I want you to get this. I want you to get this. We've got to learn how to think. We've got to learn how to think. I want you to get this. The reality of Mary's situation was that she was in the process of becoming instead of just being. She was in the process of becoming instead of being. She Think about that for a minute. Mary's ambition in life was to be. I have a friend who pastors in a fairly large church on the West Coast. He once told me about his childhood in Arkansas, how poor he was, and how his mother died when he was young. And I, his father, was addicted to alcohol and never took care of the family. And he was raised by his grandmama. And he said his old grandmama just always was struggling. They never seemed to have as much as other people had. And yet his grandma was always talking about Lord. The Lord. And he told me how, how that bothered him. And he said, secretly in his heart, he decided that the Lord ain't all grandma think he is. <laughs> you know. And one day he told his grandma. Said, Granny, you always talking about the Lord. If the Lord was fair, he wouldn't let you have as hard a time as you have it, being the good woman that you are. And he said his grandmama told him, no, I agree, God ain't fair, and I'm glad he ain't. Because <laughs> if God was fair, I wouldn't even be here. And this preacher said, as he began to study the word of God, he realized that if God had just been fair, a whole lot of folk would have been messed up. If God had been fair, Peter would have died on the Thursday night before they crucified Jesus. Told Jesus that big lie. If God was fair, he'd have cut him down. If God was fair, Paul never would have made it into Damascus. All the low down stuff he did. And so my friend said his granny told him, no, I never pray to God to be fair. What I pray is, Lord, have mercy. My friend said that changed his whole outlook on life. He said that although he preaches to hundreds of people every Sunday, he says he never preaches to them about a fair God, but he tells them about a loving God. He tells them about a forgiving God. He tells them about a saving God. 
God was dealing with my friend as a child in a way that he couldn't understand from a human point of view. Now you think about what we just got to say. you get it maybe later on this evening. <laughs> but he had an experience early in life that he looked back on and realized that there was a divine solution to his human problem. Yeah. Mary's experience in the text, no doubt, left her frightened and confused. But she was spiritual minded enough to realize that there was another way, and it was the Lord's way. The next thing we should observe is that Mary's experience revealed that she was a part of something bigger and greater than the things of this world. Before this unusual experience, Mary no doubt thought she had come to the high point in her life. Mary was an humble Jewish girl, and young women in her social class and lowly status, she didn't have any great ambitions in life. She didn't have any ideas about she was going to be something big. The greatest thing that Mary could hope to achieve had already happened. She'd met a good man, hard-working man, religious man. She fell in love. He fell in love. They were going to get married and live happily ever after. That was an ideal future. And Mary, no doubt, thought that she couldn't ask for anything more in life than that. But now all of that seemed like it's fixing to change. If Mary became pregnant under these circumstances, completely contrary to acceptable religious and social standards, her beautiful dream would suddenly become a horrible nightmare. But the reality of Mary's situation was that she was in the process, and I want you to get this. I want you to get this. We've got to learn how to think. We've got to learn how to think. I want you to get this. The reality of Mary's situation was that she was in the process of becoming instead of just being. She was in the process of becoming instead of being. She Think about that for a minute. Mary's ambition in life was to be. She wanted to be something. And God's plan was for her to become something. Somebody ought to hear me today. You see, somebody under my voice today, your goal is to be. You want to be a success. You want to be. Some of you want to be rich. You know, some of you want to be famous. You want to be a doctor. You want to be a plumber. But God's plan is for you to become his servant. God's plan is for you to become his ambassador. God's plan is for you to become his witness. Now, you might do it as a doctor. You might do it as, a, as an entertainer. But you see, the difference is, once you get to be just what you want to be, you get stuck in a rut. I, I want you to hear me. Once you get to be just what you want to be, you're stuck in a rut. A lot of you in a rut today. Because you got to be what you want to be. Mary's goal was to be Joseph's wife. God's plan for Mary was for her to become the greatest woman in the history of the world. 
My friends, if you accept God's plan for your life, you never stop becoming. Hear me now. Somebody ought to hear me today. Somebody, you see, somebody's marriage is in serious trouble today. Nobody told me nothing. <laughs> but you see, somebody's marriage is in trouble today because you got to be what you want to be and you quit becoming. You'll get that this evening. <laughs> Somebody wanted, but you quit becoming. The angel told Mary, Mary, you will have a baby. Yeah, yeah. But this won't be Joseph's baby. The Holy Spirit will give you this baby, and his kingdom will last forever. Now, my brothers and sisters, if Mary had just married Joseph, and had his babies and died, you never would have heard of Mary. You never would have heard of Mary. But I'm preaching about Mary today because she's still becoming. And she's still becoming because Mary's life grew beyond her goals and became dedicated to the Lord's plan. Yeah. Oh, my brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. As a young man, I wanted to be certain things. I wanted to be a singer. I wanted to be rich. I wanted to be famous. But instead, God called me to become his preacher to become his pastor, to become his leader. Somebody still doesn't understand that today. See, you content to be what you are, but I'm still in the process of becoming. Advent reminds us that through Christ, we are part of something greater than the things of this world. What you want to know is not what you want to be, but what God wants you to become. Well, finally, we learn from this experience that all human questions have divine answers. That's one of the special privileges of the Christian life. Be sure that you take note of Mary's question. It's simple, but it's important. I've told you that Mary was confused. She was mixed up. She was flattered that the angel came she was honored by the announcement he made, but she was also troubled and confused. So Mary had a simple question. How can this be? How can this be? And the simple question had a simple answer. Listen to the answer, three little words. Don't take them lightly. The Holy Ghost. You believe in the Holy Ghost? You believe in the Holy Ghost? I'm closing now. But this is the best part. I'm closing now, but, but what I'm talking about now is the best part. The Holy Ghost. How can the impossible become possible? The Holy Ghost. How, how can a poor, underprivileged like me, this is, this is Mary thinking now. How can a poor, underprivileged girl like me have a baby and he's going to be greater than King David? The Holy Ghost. Somebody ought to hear me today. You see, you know what's happening in your life now. But you're confused. 
you don't know how you're going to deal with your circumstances. Mary asked a question that somebody here today needs to ask. How am I going to survive? How am I going to overcome the problem I'm facing? The Holy Ghost. My bills are behind. I'm striving to catch up and can't catch up. How am I going to catch up? How my bills going to get paid? The Holy Ghost. My, my marriage is in trouble. Things seem to be getting worse all the time. How can I straighten out my marriage? The Holy Ghost. Mary thought her life was at its best. She was a fine young woman doing the right thing. She had a good name in the community. She was engaged to be married to a fine young man. The future looked bright. And then without warning, she received news that left her confused and perplexed. All she could do was ask, how can these things be? And the angel said, the Holy Ghost. Now, if you follow the story, before the Holy Ghost got through with Mary, oh, help me, Holy Spirit. Mary had a brand new life. Before the Holy Ghost got through with Mary, Mary found herself being a part of prophecy fulfilled. For Isaiah had said long time ago, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Mary had heard that all her life. And now she's a part of it. Mary was about to be a part of the gospel itself. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And when the spirit made Mary realize what she was about to become a part of, she spoke up and she said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord. The Living Bible quotes her as saying, I'm the Lord's servant. I'll do anything he wants me to do. Mary found herself confronted with a great human problem. But thank God, she found a divine solution. Somebody ought to hear me today. I've lived long enough to know that no matter what you're confronted with, whether you can see any way at all, the Holy Ghost can open doors for you that are closed against you. The Holy Ghost can keep bread on your table. The Holy Ghost can keep clothes on your back. The Holy Ghost can heal your body. The Holy Ghost can turn your life around. That's what Advent is all about. That's what the birth of Jesus is all about. Choir's going to lead us in the hymn. Deacons are coming across, the preachers are coming down, the congregation is going to stand.
to have a charitable foundation, one of the few African-American churches that I'm aware of uh, that has a separate 501c3 charitable foundation uh, that is engaged in uh, community redevelopment uh, in the surrounding area right around our church in, in what is now being called the mid-city area. Uh, Shiloh is a financial partner in the electric depot that is taking place uh, just east of the sanctuary uh, on the old Entergy property. Uh, in that space, uh, there are going to be offices, there are going to be residences, there are going to be businesses, there are going to be restaurants, there are going to be social activities. Shiloh is a financial partner in bringing that about, and Shiloh will have uh, a say in how those people uh, are able to acquire residency within that facility. Just south of Government Street, Shiloh is in the process of renovating an old motel, what we used to call no-tell motels. Uh, he, Shiloh is in the process of renovating an old no-tell motel into five apartments uh, that will provide shelter, and conveniences and a higher quality of life uh, for five families in our community. Small steps in the right direction and what we hope is that we will be able to build upon these small steps and make larger steps uh, in the footprint of this community. People need to hear more than Jesus' bread in a starving land and water in dry places. What people need is bread and water and the opportunities to purchase bread and water, and the opportunities after they've had their bread and water to lay down in a place of safety and comfort and convenience. And we recognize that we have a, a responsibility both to Christ and to our fellow man to do all that we can and utilize the resources that God has blessed us to have to help make these things a reality in the lives of people. Truth be told, there are other churches that have far greater resources than we have that aren't doing these things. And it's unfortunate that that's the case. But we're not going to cry over what others are not doing. We're simply going to do the best that we can with the resources that God has placed in our hands. Hi, this is Fred Jeff Smith, pastor of Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church. Shiloh is a traditional church with the timeless message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But that doesn't mean that we don't have something that will entice and intrigue you. We have a wonderful music ministry. We have wonderful children's ministries. We have a fabulous Christian education ministry. We're reaching out to you, inviting you to come and be a part of the Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church. We want you to come and check us out. You'll be glad that you did.